Gentlemen, Genshin Impact is taking away all our players. Perhaps if we look for what is popular in SRPGs with the kids these days, we will be able to bring them back somehow. To me? So shall it be. Hey everyone, we're back. Or I guess I'm back, rather. Unfortunately, Frontier was a little bit busy again, but this time I'm going to be talking about the Hilda and Warner patch, which came out about two weeks ago. So the reason we waited a little bit longer than usual to do this video is because it took a little bit of time for them to actually release everything that was promised in the patch. Uh, and as we're recording this, it is Sunday the 25th, and SP Sigma has been out literally less than 24 hours. So that is the main reason we took a while to make this video. But joining me this time in this endeavor will be, for the first time, our returning guest. I have Hasso Hoppa on with me. Welcome back, Hasso. Thanks for joining the show. <laughs> Hello again. I'm always happy to talk about Sigma. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that is exactly the reason I've asked you to return, because uh, SP Sigma is here. But we're not going to get to that until later on in the show. Uh, first, we got these two absolute... Well, okay, one of them is not crazy, but wow, this other character... Jesus. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> well, before we get to Hilda, let's just start Let's just start with Werner. Uh, you know... Okay, so, so do you have anything to say about Werner real quick? Uh, well, Werner is... Uh clearly the, the second choice I think most people are looking at for the two of them. Uh, he's a pure cavalry, like uh, Helena, who just came out for Global. Both of his tier 3 classes are cavalry. Uh, basically all of his troops are cavalry, um, so you you don't have a whole lot of surprise available to you. There's only non-cavalry tier 3 troop is Guardian Infantry, and he <laughs> is uh, effectively Letitia SSR version, version 2.0. Uh, his talent only helps his allies, it speeds them up, gives them plus one mobility, and lets them ignore one one instance of terrain like Illustrial does, or like the new Machine Rider Cavalry that are kind of his signature troop also get. Um, his 3C kind of makes up for his talent, I guess, because it's, it's a stacking 3C, gives him 5% to all of his stats every stack. Uh, he can spam it, it's a just a buff exclusively, so... Uh, he ends up with 15% stats. It gives him three different forms. One is a mobility form that gives him plus three mobility. One is a damage form, gives him up to 15% damage based on tiles moved. And the other is uh, some boring tanky form that gives him damage reduction <laughs> and healing every turn or something like that. Anyway, so he has sprint. He's got his talent that gives unique movement to other people. Uh, his only unique sort of attack skill is one that lets him ignore guards, so he can kind of do an assassin thing. I'm not actually how sure he's, how effective he's going to be at that. He has to move 10 squares uh, in order to ignore guard with it, which he can do pretty easily even on turn 1. But uh, it's a 1.2x attack. He doesn't have any damage in his talent. He's got decent attack for an assassin, but it just seems like he might even just be more effective because he has another ta ability that lets him use any leftover move to retreat plus two additional movement so you could just use him to be an annoying little bitch that uh <laughs> hits the tank he's got smash he's got assault he's got ram so you could just have him run in you know assault the tank deal a chunk of damage not gonna one shot the tank with him but you know get him down to 40 percent health or 30 percent health or something and no heal and then 
follow up even maybe so you could do that instead of trying to do the assassin thing with him yeah uh so like you said uh werner is very much like he's clearly an sr Letitia. i guess they decided that because uh they saw they probably saw that Letitia was kind of popular in some of the r and sr like community votes for sp heroes that they were like we gotta we have to stop this <laughs> we can't we cannot allow this to happen so they just created uh, like you know they just created an ssr version of Letitia so to discourage people from voting for Letitia ever again <laughs> Uh, I'm going to correct a couple things you said. So first off, like his talent is actually... So the, the movement from his talent, it does not apply to himself. And also, this is not a unique buff. It is actually a generic movement buff. Oh, wow. Uh, I just... Yeah. Just, yeah, well, I don't think I said it applied to him. I might have. If I did, I missed. Oh, you, did, you didn't. I was, I was um, just clarifying. Okay, yeah. but yeah, if that is a generic plus one movement, that's kind of awful. I mean, obviously, Letitia's is unique. And I, he also has Sprint, which made me think, surely... His talent. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's the odd thing. So he has sprint, but he's st- like this movement is not a unique buff. Uh, I mean, I guess it makes a little bit of sense when you consider he also gives the the lusty block. So they didn't want him to just give basically two blocks of movement for free. They wanted to give him movement plus one and uh, just a generic movement plus one and like a, a lusty block ignore of one block. Also, one thing to note about this off-roading skill in his talent, uh, this buff will not apply to units that already have the ability to do so. So, uh, people have tested this and, like, it does not apply onto uh, Lustrial. It does not apply onto anybody using Machine Riders. So, yeah, like, that actually severely limits what this talent... Like, when at, when you first look at it, you, th- you would think, like, oh, this looks really good, but then mm-hmm. there's actually quite a few limitations on this talent. Nevertheless, I think he is like a, he is a very interesting character. Uh, I think compared to a lot of the heroes we've been getting the last couple months on the Chinese server, this this character is actually very simple. Mm-hmm. Uh, he you know he, his skills his skill set is actually like very gen- mostly very generic like cavalry style attacks like smash ram and assault and all that stuff. Like you said, he has sprint like Letitia, but it's, it's kind of weird. There's like that redundancy between his talent and sprint. Right. Uh, I mean, I mean, I guess it does give it does give the attack buff still. Uh, so I am kind of wondering if uh, if he would be like paired in a box with with Akka, because Akka is sort of used as like the enabler for a lot some like crazy single target rush strategies. Uh, I'm kind of wondering if you could. I guess I guess like if someone bans Akka, you can pick Warner instead. But I don't know how effective that would be, because wow. I mean. Akka gives 30% attack, which is why like she was kind of a big deal. And she gives movement plus two instead of one. Right. Uh, I mean, he kind of gives plus two move. Uh, you know, if you, you her plus two movement is another generic thing, so he gives the one movement mm. and the terrain ignore. But uh, by that logic, then people are going to be voting for SP Letitia, so they can have three <laughs> different mobility buffers. You just can't ban it out anymore. Um, Possibly. Clearly what people are going to want to do. Yeah, I've heard a lot of people, uh, like I said, I'm not actually sure if uh, his unique attack skill, a rush, that lets him ignore guard if he moves at least 10. I'm not actually sure if he's going to be able to kill a whole lot with that. Obviously he can maybe uh, pick up some kills. You know, a unit gets their 100% bonuses broken by some AoE or something else, mm. and then he, he swoops in. Um, a lot of people were concerned because he has to move 10 squares if your opponent sort of rushes yeah. forward. Uh, it's hard to move that. 10 squares it it is worth noting obviously he can wrap around units though so like if he's head on with a unit he can move another four just by going to the back side of the unit and stuff so yeah i think there'll be ways to get the guard ignore i just don't even know if he's gonna be that good at actually killing anything because like i said his talent no offensive no defensive no nothing yeah. for himself at all so he just pretty much is relying on his 3c which he has to spend three turns stacking up it doesn't have a cooldown but uh he just has to spam it to get the five percent stats, and uh, each each stack also gives movement plus one, so he gets three movement that way. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're rushing, like three turns is a significant amount of time to be just sitting around waiting for Werner to, I guess, warm up his motorcycle or whatever. Uh, he, like you said, uh, he 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 himself has no stat boost. He has no damage increase in his talent. He needs to rely on the stat boost from his 3 cost skill, which is still only 15%, which is not like a huge boost or anything. His base attack is okay, 570. It's, it's decent. He does have 35% attack bonus on his soldier, and he has bone dinos. So being able to pierce guard with bone dinos and, you know, himself, I think you will probably be able to kill a decent number of targets. But yeah, I mean, I would probably compare it to D-Heart to some degree. 
Uh, D Heart's problem, of course, is the fact that demon hunters are total garbage, <laughs> and uh, you know, a lot of times, if you're using Cav D Heart, obviously you're using uh, demon hunters plus uh, Blamity. Mm -hmm. Rush, the Rush skill that uh, Werner has instead has uh, 1.2 times damage, which is pretty low multiplier, but it does have uh, plus 15% damage because if you're piercing guard, you're gonna get that 15% damage, right. obviously. So in total, you will you will get 15% damage and 15% on his stats. And uh, you could still put him in his uh, offensive form to get another 15% damage if you want to. Uh, although, obviously, that would limit his movement. Right, you can only ignore guard then after you've pretty much full stacked your talent, I believe. Yeah, I mean, it's like 5 plus 3 from his full stacks, and then you have to, you have to either breeze... Uh, and you can have machine riders on him, of course. I guess you don't. You shouldn't use bone dinos on him. You should probably use machine riders, which 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 are like quite strong themselves as well. Right, they're they're fine. They're not quite as offensive as as uh, bone dinos, but uh, still a solid soldier. But yeah, there's just the fact that he's all cavalry too means it's kind of I don't know. I mean, there are times where that's nice, but. Yeah, I, I guess uh, he's probably only going to be killing like mages and stuff. Uh, if you run into like. I mean, obviously, like, an Aaron Rod, you're not going to kill Aaron Rod. You're not going to kill... You're probably not going to kill, like, most... Uh, anybody who brings a Lancer Soldier. <laughs> just all those, all those old school mages have those, like, Lava Titans or Stone Colossus or something, though. That is true. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this is fine. Like, I, I mean, if they gave him... If they made Werner himself too strong, I think he would be absolutely broken. So as is, I think he's actually a pretty well-balanced unit. Uh, you know, he's he's an enabler, and then he'll have... He can do something else after that. I mean, compared to Letitia, Letitia boosts her characters, and then she just sort of sits around doing nothing. Yeah. <laughs> At least Warner can do something after that. Yeah, I mean, he's fine. Um, and he's clearly not the, uh, the premier unit on the banner, but not awful. You do need to get Warner for Hilda, because Hild one of Hilda's bonds is Warner. Is, uh, the defense bond is Warner, so... <laughs> yeah, she, she might want that. Yeah, <laughs> you kind of want that out of the tank. For Warner himself, his bonds are Leon and Rosalia. Uh, Leon, I think most people have. Well, you know, most people use Leon for PBE, so they might probably have him around. Rosalia, I think a, a couple people skipped over. Uh, so that might be a bit of an issue if you want Warner, but you didn't get Rosalia. Yeah, that's kind of becoming more of a an issue over time. It used to be that you could probably reliably expect uh, a new hero that came out to show up on a focus banner within, I don't know, three months, maybe a little longer than that. But now, like Rosalia, I think she shows up with Elwyn in yeah. mid-January on not a focus yeah. banner, although most people have Elwyn, so worst comes to worst, you might be able to just get Rosalia shards <laughs> from the trade-in if you got a six-star Elwyn. Just force But uh, yeah, just uh, with the increased hero pool, it's becoming more and more of a wait between a character's release and when they might show up again. I mean, they keep repeating those weird banners where it's like, where it's like Altamuller, Ledin, and Rachel or something, and it's like, it's like, come on, guys. Yeah, well, they always <laughs> repeat the same one, too. So, you know, there's like the Landius Juggler something banner. I think it's out right now, even. Uh, Landius Juggler Yulia, I believe. Right, and like, I don't know, I mean, like, those characters are important, and it's good yeah. to for people that maybe are starting out to have access yeah, to yeah, them sure. again but then with the whole the shard trade is a nice little thing to maybe help you top up some characters you were trying to build but then if they keep coming out with the exact same duplicate banners you can only do that a little bit anyway but yeah i think that probably much does it for werner yeah he, like i said he's pretty pretty straightforward uh i don't think there's a whole lot to say about werner but uh next we got uh <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> okay, I'm trying not to overreact to this character, but like okay, we got Hilda, so uh you know, I've I've made I've made I've probably like underestimated and overestimated characters in the past, but mm -hmm. I mean I think in this case I, I'm it's reasonable for me to say like what what is this alone? What is this <laughs> character? <laughs> yeah, I mean it's if you're if you're PvPing, you you know that Juggler and Landius are basically omnipresent. Uh, almost every box has both of them, and Hilda is... You have to struggle to find things that Hilda does worse than Landius does. Hilda is Landius 2.0, uh, and is basically better in almost every way. I mean, different faction buffs, so, you know, different characters that they can boost up, so there's some differences there, but, uh... 
but damn. <laughs> yeah, uh, before we get into her kit, uh, let me just put, let me just paste this in the chat box real quick. Uh, I, I've, I've showed you this before, but uh, this is the uh, stat breakdown mm -hmm. between Hilda and Landius. And of course, <laughs> the thing you immediately notice is that they just took all the unimportant stats for Landius and just redistributed them to all the important stats for Hilda. Yeah, Landius has that sweet, sweet 118 skill versus Hilda has 106. So, <laughs> much more skillful character. Uh, she does have less magic defense, a slight bit, a slight bit less. I mean, the, the differences here like are are so minimal. It's very odd. But like uh, the difference in skill, I have heard like in some cases, like some people have like killed Landius with Omega before, uh, <laughs> uh, because they didn't invest in skill at all, and it's unexpected. But to me, that sounds like that sounds like it would take a really really thick Omega and a really lame Landius. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, like, so to me, it's like the loss in skill uh, for Hilda, especially like, especially because Hilda has higher defense by a pretty decent margin. Uh, I think, uh, like, just dropping skill entirely for her is not going to be an issue at all. Yeah, but she has she has more HP, she has more attack, she's got more defense. Uh, you know, Grand Marshal to Grand Marshal, Royal Knight to Royal Knight, Hilda outstats Landius, uh, even just in their base normal stats. Okay, so <laughs> let's get into Hilda's kit and God, where do we even begin? So let's okay, let's just go let's just go in order. Let's start with her talent. So first off, her talent is the revive, which is pretty standard on tanks now. But of course she has a talent revive, which means you cannot disable this. You can't you can't cheese her with Licorice's terrain, you can't cheese her with Peacemaker. You're you're gonna have to kill her twice, no matter what. Well, I mean, unless you unless you use sick Clotaire on her, I guess Clotaire can disable it. <laughs> that's you that's go. your only option. Uh, uh, she also has uh, if she has two or more buffs, which basically means all the time, uh, <laughs> she gets twenty five percent damage reduction, which is crazy. That's the same amount as Albedo, and this isn't just physical or ma uh, or magical; it's both. Uh, and then she gets the Landius attack to defense conversion. The only thing she is missing is that she does not get the free attack bonus that Landius gets from his talent. But again, this is folded into our talent. This isn't something like Landius where he has to end his turn and then get a buff. So the buff on Landius, you know, you can buff block him, you can dispel it. Uh, with Hilda, that's not the case at all. It's folded in her talent. She has it all the time. And then finally, she has this ridiculous effect where if one of her allies gets attacked, uh, she completely blocks a critical hit. <laughs> for one for one time and then it only has a one turn cooldown at six stars so uh yeah like you know you got landius who like you got landius who turns assassins into coin flip chances of crit and here comes hilda who's just like nope you don't get the crit at all yeah and it says it uh it affects an when when the ally is attacked so i assume it doesn't proc on herself so some people are saying oh you just need to attack her with someone and then that'll trigger it and then you know, you can go in with the assassin. I don't think that's the case. Um, and then it's also in battle, so like AOE, it doesn't prevent crits from AOEs, but that also means that you can't burn the talent use on an AOE and then go in with an assassin. Yeah. It's just like almost exclusively, no, you're not critting, I don't care, <laughs> assassins. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what is there to say here? This is, this is basically everything Landius has except better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because you can't get rid of it. Uh, and and next we got, like, her kit. So her kit is crazy, too. She's got, you know, she's got heavy shield. She's got route, just like Landius. She's got these two passives, Halberd Breaker and Arrow Breaker, which Landius has 35% range damage reduction. Hilda, quote-unquote, only has 25% damage reduction. But if you equip the Arrow Breaker skill, she gets another 10% range damage reduction. And attack plus 15%, which is similar to what Landius got in it from his talent. So, like, when he's countering, when she's countering uh, ranged attackers, gonna hit back just as hard. But this is only against assassins and archers. Uh, she, this actually is only for physical attacks. Well, the, so, the damage uh, taken minus 10% appears to be for both, but the uh, her ability to counter attack ranged attacks is just for physical attacks. So she'll right. still have the 35% DR against mages, but she'll just yeah. eat all their damage and not and hit back. And of course, for melee, you got Halberd Breaker, which you know disables the weapon ability. So uh, this is—I uh, th think this is the first time they've added this skill onto someone since Helena. Uh, so, like, if you try to attack her, your weapon gets disabled, so you lose the 10% attack or whatever. Uh, if you're using Balance Blade, you lose 
if you're if you're attacking with Leon or whatever, you lose the balance blade. You're not going to be able to shuffle their team within two rings afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, you lose you know, Ragnarok. It, yeah, you lose Ragnarok. You can't ding her. Uh, and of course, she can stack this with heavy shield, which is <laughs> a 25 percent chance to reduce melee damage by 50 percent. Uh, and then of course you got her her guard her three cost guard skill, which is which is the truly crazy part because she can change her class halfway through a battle using her three cost. Right. It just it changes her class type. I think only. I don't think it changes her movement type or her movement range or. But does not. Yes. Yeah, so she st- she still moves the same way. She just becomes basically she like if you use the lance lancer mode in her cavalry class she's still moving like a cavalry it's just that she's a lancer now mm-hmm. and and of course the other other way around works as well uh i don't know which one you would want i think arguably like sometimes you want the lancer just because you don't want to get obstructed by a lot of the maps that are available in apex now because there's there's a lot of maps where like the water and the forest can screw you over right now. the big thing i was looking at um she's got her soldier choices um and one of them is crystal molders so oh, yeah. you know it's it's a dumb thing where it seems like she oh she could be weak to magic but then she has uh, that's crystal what i was molders. gonna talk about yeah. and um, yeah, I was... so i would think that i think her probably animation her attack animation probably doesn't change when she changes class either so if you start mm-hmm. out as cavalry and then switch to lancer you're still gonna rush forward past your crystal molders so i would think maybe lancer right. would be the more uh versatile first choice obviously you lose the five movement um, it seems like things are kind of switching more to a slow grinding, tanky four tank box type play style in China. I don't know if that you know will stay the case uh, for global, but in that case, the loss of the two movement isn't that huge. Um, so I would think Lancer maybe it's also bulkier uh, physically than yeah. It does it is weaker to magic again, but then she has the crystal molders which. Yeah, kind of that's, that's that what issue. I was gonna say. Like, you know, when like when she was first revealed, people were saying like, "Oh, she looks weak to magic. She, she can't counter magic. She's got low magic defense." But my like, she I I feel like she tanks magic just as well as Landius does. I mean, right now you got Landius. Landius could get like one shot by lightning from a Rachel with the range staff right now. But it's like that doesn't work on Hilda because even if Hilda is in cavalry class, she's just gonna she's gonna switch to Lancer. <laughs> it's, it's like nothing you can do about it. You know, she has just as much range damage reduction as Landius does mm-hmm. if she has the arrow breaker passive. And she has better magic tanking soldier choices. She's got both Crystal Molders and Templar Knights. So she can pick and choose whichever one she wants to counter, you know, what your pick ban was. So to me, it's like, it's kind of nuts. Like, and she even has Stone Colossus. Stone Colossus have their place too, I think. You know, with the, with the, uh, you know, a lot, you know, Stone Colossus stacked on her 25% damage reduction. With with the ten percent damage reduction from her uh, arrow breaker, and then like, and then you get the the lancer text active plus the stone colossus tech, it's like they become like nearly invincible. <laughs> yeah, it's uh it's rough. And the funny thing is, we've gotten off on this tangent, and we still haven't even gotten through all the effects of her three cost. Uh, <laughs> she's got the passive component that you know she takes all damage for adjacent allies, and then she's immune to movement down. So if you want to oh, yes. slap a uh, a bracer on her. Then you aren't trading off the you know Overlord badge gives him immunity to Moby down, but she doesn't need it for that. Um, it makes all of her allies within two blocks immune to displacement, which again that says allies, so I think she'd be vulnerable to displacement, perhaps. Uh, I believe I believe it includes herself it because does. Landius okay. is Aura. I believe also it says okay. something similar. Yeah, that's always so. a little vague it yeah, seems like yeah. inconsistent Com- commands commands are weird like that commands are <laughs> okay but like presumably they're all immune to displacement and take 35 percent less fixed damage to just slap some more stuff on there <laughs> some more so basically <laughs> screw you angelina uh that's that, that's what i'm getting out of this <laughs> you, you can't displace like the you can't displace people out of the way and then just like kill them that's what angelina did mm-hmm. uh the fixed damage taken like 35% is a decent amount, so I do think uh, that is still pretty useful. I mean, that's uh, a big chunk. I mean, chunk. it's not... Yeah, it's not It's not like that stupid... Like, it's not like that stupid armor we got where it gets minus 10%. We're just like, what the hell am I going to do with this thing? Yeah, well... Uh, <laughs> it's like... They clearly realized 10% wasn't enough. Um, yeah. <laughs> nobody was using that armor, I don't think. Yeah. I mean, I guess you, you could stack it with this, I guess. Like, I mean, if... I don't know if that would be a good idea. Uh, 
Like maybe as a tech choice against someone that brought a lot of fixed damage and you didn't have enough yeah. bracers or didn't want to use bracers or something. But no, I don't. I don't think that this really redeems the armor. I mean, going from sixty-five percent damage taken to fifty-five percent damage taken is a, it's bigger than a ten percent jump because that's how percentages work. But uh, mm -hmm. I, I still don't see it being that desirable. So yeah, you were you yeah. were kind of going through all of her skills and. Her biggest problem, you know, is, I mean, a lot of characters have this problem. She only has three skill slots. She's going to take her 3C, right. like, pretty much all the time. If she's going to buff Tensei, then she's got her 3C and Tensei, and we, she picks between We actually didn't even talk about that. We didn't oh. talk about the fact that she is a faction-buffing tank, and that just just by existing, she is going to completely change the meta. <laughs> yep. Uh, I mean, you know, the Tensei faction is very, very powerful, uh, or individual unit wise so just the fact that they have gotten a core tank that can buff them all uh, that's kind of crazy yeah it's uh, it's just what they said that they weren't going to do <laughs> yeah like I, I translated that uh, interview from like a year back or mm -hmm. something where they said like yeah we don't want to just create like a landius or a juggler for every faction that would be too easy that, that like that wouldn't be like that wouldn't be very creative and here comes Hilda just like it's just better Landius. The funny thing is, they have, you know, the Juggler and Landius are both faction buffing tanks, but most people don't even want to bring a faction buff on Juggler if they can at all avoid it. So, yeah. like, they could have made some sort of Juggler clone, Juggler 2.0, and then mm. been in better shape than just here's Landius again, and he's buffing Tensei now, so despair. <clears throat> oh, God. And, okay, can I, can I, like, stop this for a tangent on, like, what, okay. Of all the characters in Tensei that you would choose to be like sort of the representative like central tank character, it's like it's like why would you pick freaking Hilda? It's like that would be like making a dog represent Langrisser three, okay? Uh, oh wait, shit, that's a bad example. There may be some precedent here. Yeah, I don't think that. I mean, I sure know I don't. I sure know I don't know anything <laughs> about Tensei, but okay. Uh, uh, I mean, Hilda's not an unimportant character. She's a major, like, she's like the major general character in the Empire route. But it is kind of weird to me that, like, she's going to be, like, the core Tensei character in, in Mobile now. Uh, I mean, I guess they already released a lot of the main characters, like uh, Licorice, Renata, or, like, or even, like, uh, like, I guess a lot of the, the main characters I left over don't really fit the bill of a tank. Because, uh... I mean, you don't know these characters, but like, there's there's like other major characters, like I guess Ansel or Toa. Uh, those characters are probably not like th those characters don't don't seem like tanks, I guess. Hilda seems more like someone who could be a tank. Uh, there's also like uh, I've got her name. Uh, uh, Michelle. That was that was her name. Uh, she's like in full armor. Uh, she's probably going. I thought I thought she would be the first like Tensei tank, mm. uh, but I guess they went with Hilda, and she's she's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, her uh, her echo of light certainly echoes that with the the chainsaw. Uh, yeah, the uh, the echo of lights this time are, are pretty great. Uh, I like I like the Werner echo of light. <laughs> so it's pretty great. So it's the motorcycle with the with the with the chain gun. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like I was saying, she suffers from too many good skills. Uh, a lot of the time, her kit's just going to be faction buff three C, and then either arrow yeah. breaker if you're against ranged units or yeah. halberd breaker if you're worried about you know a claret coming in um her actual just normal two cost guard she's got lance phalanx but she also has a unique one imperial formation that is also mm -hmm. very solid it's you know guards everything and then it has a two by five so a big fat uh stubby aoe in front of her that makes <laughs> terrain yeah. that then keeps enemies from doing move again or act again so if right. Claretta's attacking from there, then she's done, and anyone that wants to <laughs> attack and run away uh, will not. <laughs> so that's kind of—I mean, Landius obviously prevents move again more effectively than Hilda. That's something he has on her. <laughs> she has to bring a skill that she probably can't fit and only affects, you know, a little two by five area. So score one for Landius. <laughs> Hilda also, like, incidentally powers up the Empire and strategic factions. Mm -hmm. uh, Empire Empire buffs have been coming one after the other for a while now. And, of course, we have Rosenseal who buffs Empire. So I actually, I actually don't think it's going to be as rare as you might think for Hilda to get a faction buff outside herself. 
Of course, I mean, obviously, if you need to buff Tensei characters, you need Tense uh, Hilda to bring her own faction buff, but you got Rosenseal to buff her Empire, you got... Uh, some people are running Leon still. Uh, you know, strategic, you could probably be bring Lamford if you just want to crush your opponent with thick <laughs> stats. Uh, you know, that is an option. You right. know, I, and, you know, uh, Lamford got some shiny new troops dispatched too, so <laughs> I guess there's that. I, I think it's actually not... It's not as hard to get her an outside buff as it is for Landius, because Landius, it's like... You know, what does he have? He has uh, Legend and Protag. Mm -hmm. And it's like... Legend has one other buffer, Sigma, who is not used very well. I guess he might be used a little bit more often now. Uh, and Protag, you know, Matthew is pretty trash right, right now. Well, regardless, uh, Sigma can hardly afford to bring his faction buff, regardless yeah. of how you use him. Yeah, and so Hilda has three factions, and there's plenty of faction buffers to go around in these three factions, I feel like. Uh, even even Ares bringing his faction buff, I don't think, would be a terrible idea. Yeah, I mean, she has options, but... It is kind of just an embarrassment of good stuff for her, and yeah, as this yeah this character looks absolutely nuts to me. Like, it's it's it just I I don't even know what to say. Like this, it's like her her kit is so optimized. She's got like, she's got uh, you know so many layers like melee damage. Like, you're not breaking through this lady with melee damage. Like she's she's got heavy shields. She's got really high defense, and and like she's got that one uh, the halberd breaker skill. So like you never should bring any melee damage against her. But like even range damage, it's like like it's still kind of hard to break through her. Yeah, I mean you basically would have to have you know single target infantry and mages or something. So she wants to bring crystal molders, but then you got infantry. I guess even just infantry soldiers is enough. Yeah. Because so normally soldiers fight soldiers. So, I mean, there are maybe ways that you can get around it with multiple units, but that's obviously, you know, most of the time you're like, I yeah. want a big tank buster and then their mm. tank's dead or I'm going to ignore it. I mean, she doesn't do much to AoE. And obviously there are other things sure. coming out that make AoE less appealing, but Hilda herself doesn't really address the AoE issue if you need to address well, it. She, uh, I guess Landius' aura does reduce AoE damage, so she yes. does not do that. Uh, so you got that. The fact that she can change her class, it's like uh, infantry, like infantry or cav tank busters would actually, I don't think either one would be a safe choice against her, because obviously in pick ban you don't know what you're going to face, and uh, obviously she can change anyway. So mm -hmm. it's like the only safe way to attack into her consistently is with a Lancer DPS. Right. Oh, that uh, that actually jogged my memory about something I didn't I didn't put down in my notes here. Um, mm -hmm. It could be that Hilda makes it more likely that we start seeing some Lancer Elwins again. Like, what, right when his SP came yeah, out, that's people what I was thought, thinking. oh, well, you know, you get plus three mobility, uh, you know, you might miss out on a few things, but you could start using Lancer Landius with that plus three mobility. But it seemed like pretty much everyone just exclusively was like, nah, let's do Cavalry Land or Elwyn. I think I started saying Landius in there. <laughs> yeah, Elwyn. Uh, Cav Elwyn is mostly because like for, for early on, like uh, in this in this season seven medal or whatever, like people were just teleporting Elwyn forward and just like killing their tank or whatever. Uh, people have kind of wised up to that, and everybody's just running blood pact on their tanks now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so Elwyn can't just run up and sword soul you. Uh, I mean. I mean, even after Sword, I mean, Sword Soul, even after that, like, Elwyn hits you really hard. But it's like, against Hilda, it's like, if if Hilda's using a blood pack and she brings heavy shields or whatever, it's like, you know, she might activate heavy shields. She might even have Bloodline on top of that. It's just like, uh, this is like, probably not going to work that well. Yeah. So she's busted. So if you PvP, pull her, build her, learn, yeah. learn to love her, I guess. <laughs> um,. Because you're going to be seeing a lot of her. We, Ed, Zalong wants everyone to get stepped on by Hilda, <laughs> is what it looks like. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, 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 I just I just cannot, like right now, I just cannot think of a lot of ways to easily bust her. Like, it's just, it seems kind of crazy. I mean, we did get a number of, like, really strong single target mages. Uh, you know, like, uh, Glory is stronger now, so Noemi gets a little bit more play. Uh, young Jessica gets more play, a little bit more play. Tensei Jessica is very strong, mm -hmm. so all three of them are very strong single target mages. So all of them can probably hit Hilda pretty hard. But yeah, that's that's kind of nuts to me that like she only has one weakness, and even that weakness is not that big of a weakness. Look, also, new SP Sigma can hit her. <laughs> three range, uh, three range counter doesn't help when you're getting hit from six away. 
Yeah, you could try that. I don't, I don't know if, uh, I mean, because I, cause right now, I guess, like, the big problem with Sigma right now is that you, I guess we'll talk about that when we get to yeah, Sigma. Yeah, that's fine. I uh, just so, thought it was okay. worth mentioning there. I think that's all we got to say about Hilda. She is absolutely nuts. Yep. Uh, you probably want to pull for her. You also want to pull for Werner so you can power up Hilda. <laughs> uh, they're, they're releasing a lot of these new banners where it's like, you know, oh, you kind of, like, they're ramping they're ramping up their gotta pull this for PvP game. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah, on that note, like since we we were talking about PVE so much, like just quick note about PVE. Uh, Hilda, I think, is also excellent for PVE. Of course. Uh, yeah. No. Slepnir. No complaints. She's, she's gonna. She can tank Slepnir. I mean, if you did not raise Ultimular, uh, you did not raise like some kind of tank for Slepnir. You know, if you're gonna raise Hilda for PVP anyway, you're gonna have a really solid tank. They're taking to Slepnir if you want to aim for that high score. Yep, she does it all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She just, just like. Absolutely crazy. Okay, uh, anything final you want to add here? <laughs> no, I think that uh, that about covers it. Yeah. Okay. So next, uh, let's let's talk about the three cost skills now. Uh, first up, we got Lambda's three cost skill. Uh, Lambda's three cost skill. What else it would it be? It is an AOE that is tree themed. Uh, I'm very happy about <laughs> it being tree themed. Uh, although, like, one can I can I just say real quick? Uh, even though it is tree themed. I am very upset by the fact that the animation is that it shows, okay, she casts a spell, and then a tree appears, and then the tree shoots lasers out, and I'm like, come on, guys. You don't like, like laser trees? If, okay, if, if, if I if I want a wizard to cast a tree spell in a video game, they gotta attack with the branches and the roots and stuff, okay? You got, like, you know, don't, don't, don't use lasers from the tree, that's lame. <laughs> well, I, I can't say I've seen it, but come on, <laughs> laser tree. Okay. But, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. So anyway, we got this. Uh, we got this three cost AOE for Lambda. It's just a slight bit weaker than the the uh, Dragon Breath skill she has, but it's like eh, you know, it's 0 0.01 per, uh, times lower, which is isn't a big deal. It's a self target AOE like Heaven Sanction or Rachel's 3C. Of course, since Lambda has the range increase in her talent, this deck actually ends up targeting six squares around her, which is a pretty huge spam. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like she can drop it down right next to her like Lana can. So, first off, this skill uh, also has a passive portion uh, if she's in forest, so obviously they designed this to be synergistic with her forest skill. Uh, if she is in forest, she is immune to attack down and silence. Uh, it's nice to have. It's kind of just making up for the fact that her accessory slot has eternally been taken up by her uh, exclusive equipment, which I'm still buttered about. <laughs> uh, I, I really wish that her exclusive was like a was body armor or something, because then you could like bring something else for accessory but you know fine whatever you know they, they she has science immune now and attack immune that's that's nice uh aside from the aoe it also debuffs the opponents that are hit with a damage dealt in decrease and it also creates a terrain effect because sure we got to get more terrain effects in this game basically it's like it it lowers critical hit rate of anybody of all the enemies that are in the terrain so i'm kind of looking at this uh and i guess to me, the, the critical hit rate decrease, I don't know how useful that would be because Lambda is super, super frail. Like, I've, I have I use Lambda quite a bit, and she dies to everything. Like, she she has, like, no bulk whatsoever. So I don't know, like, even if you give her something like Death Robe and use this terrain and have Landius around, she can, like, probably drop crit rates to, like, basically to zero. But even then, it's like, I'm kind of wondering, is she just going to die anyway? Because, like, she cannot take any hits at all. And she has no tanky troops, and obviously, like, Zerida with Bloodthirster or anybody else attacking her directly are, are just going to tear her apart. So I don't know how useful this is. And right now, I feel like uh, I, I barely ever use the force skill on Lambda. Uh, so using this obviously means you have one less AoE, and it's actually kind of easy to run out of AoEs on Lambda if you're just spamming them. Uh, if you don't get lucky, obviously. You, you want to get lucky with her exclusive equipment, but, you know, sometimes it's... Even if you hit five targets, it's still a coin flip chance. So you know, sometimes the the chance uh, the odds are not with you, and you're gonna run out of AOEs, and that would be bad. <laughs> but aside from that, like, yeah, I don't think I have a lot to say about it other than that. What do you think? Hmm. Well, you covered a lot of things there. Um, let's see, something important and intelligent to say about this skill. Uh, well, <laughs> let's see. I mean, it, it's a three cost, and she was. I, I mean, I kind of viewed her as a little bit tied to that forest skill. It was her kind of unique skill. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. kind of nice that, you know, now she has three costs that pairs with her one cost. But like you said, she can just uh, 
be run with three AoEs. Um, it's a huge effect, both you know being a sp five span point blank AoE plus her talent, so she's very likely to be hitting five targets or more if your opponent has summons. Although I think her accessory caps out at fifty percent anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so that part's very nice. Um, it kind of pairs with her white dragon breath. White dragon's breath lowers attack by 20%, and then the, this lowers damage by 20%, and the field effect lowers crit by 30%, so it seems like it kind of is trying to play toward uh, a tank pushy slow game where you just sort of wear your opponent down, make them weaker, make yourself stronger. Uh, gradually win that way. She's got the Forest Aura also, which again increases defense more. I don't know if she ever can get tanky enough, even with all that stuff stacked on an Assassin, to handle Assassins attacking her or not, but in general it kind of seems to move toward that. Her terrain effect isn't that impactful, but just the fact that it is a terrain effect is nice because it gives you the option to wipe out opponent's terrain effects, um, and it has a decent chance of clocking, and so you could, might be able right. to consistently remove terrain effects that are not beneficial to you. Although, obviously, it, on the flip side, it'll remove beneficial terrain effects, which you might not always, you know, might become an issue. Yeah, to me, well, to me, like, well, I guess, I guess I'm, I'm not a good example because my box is really weird, and not, my box is not something people usually play. Uh, I have almost no terrain effects in my box. I don't use them very often. But uh, usually when I use Lambda, she is there to just do damage. Uh, anything else she does is pretty much just a bonus. Uh, like Lambda's AoE damage is pretty nuts. Uh, you know, she's got really high damage increase. She's got good intelligence. I'm kind of wondering if like you want to switch to clock channel Lambda just to improve your odds <laughs> of clocking over and over, uh, because that's what I, that's that's the impression I get from this that they probably want you to just. Uh, count on some kind of clock happening at some point and just spamming hit her AoEs over and over. Right, well, with clock, obviously, then you have a 65% a chance if you're hitting yeah, uh, something around that, five yeah. people. Well, you know, 30% from clock, 50% from mm -hmm. the uh, accessory, and then, you know, the risk that they proc at the same time are neither procs, so it's 65% if right. you're hitting five. Um, but yeah, I don't know, it seems... Uh, reasonably good. Like you said, you can't bring three AoE AoEs then, so um, there's a trade-off. Mm -hmm. And like I said, my, my problem with Lambda is that she is she is paper thin, like she cannot take anything, so she has no tanky troops whatsoever, so I, I'm kind of wondering like, yeah, you, you might be able to reduce crits to zero, but I don't know if you'll be able to survive even with all that. You know, especially if you backstab her, because obviously she's not going to have fixed immune because she can't wear med ring. Uh, I can't imagine anybody putting a bracer on Lambda. <laughs> uh, I, I guess this is where Hilda's fixed damage minus thirty five percent comes in, or something. <laughs> yep. I don't know. So I don't know. I mean, I think it's solid, but it's certainly not. Uh... Yeah, it. I don't think it changes her too much. Right. It's, it's an interest. It's an interesting one. I, I'll probably try it out a bit, but I don't know how useful right. it will be in practice. It's probably not something that's going to make people that didn't have Lambda built already rush out to start. Yeah. Gate of Fate. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I would. I would like contrast this with Shelfenil's three cost, which I think Shelfenil's three cost is really, really good. Like, mm -hmm. especially in the meta that it's become, uh, because Shelfenil's three cost dispels buffs which is kind of is which is a pretty big deal right now because right now debuffs kind of got a big hit uh dispelling buffs became a lot more important lambda can't really do that but shelfaniel is going to be spamming that thing right and shelfaniel has reliably four four turn cooldown reduction on it so yeah. um where lambda is hoping to trigger that 50 50 uh shelfaniel is always going to be able to cast it every other turn pretty much uh i guess i guess the idea is that you can put them both in your box of course mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, because right now I think if you play AOE, you you usually go for the big damage AOEs now. Not just uh, you don't rely on debuffs as much. You go for the big AOE, uh, big damage. Shelfinel can do that. Lambda can do that. Uh, even even like some units like Maya. I think Maya like Maya isn't huge damage, but she does like dispels and stuff alongside her she, uh, AOEs, she's which got is very useful. Good damage and dispels and also debuffs yeah. to make them take more damage even. Yeah. From follow up AOEs, so she's she's got some options. Uh, she yeah. is another relatively paper thin mage, though. Well, at least at least Maya's immune to fix, though, mm -hmm. because she's got. Yeah, yeah it's it, yeah, but yeah, it looks like Lambda's role is going to change very much. She's still huge AOE damage, but uh, I don't I don't 
think this terrain will have much practical use in most cases. Uh, I mean, you could like sort of keep Lambda back and push everyone else forward and then put this terrain around everyone else so that everyone else gets the benefit. So Lambda is in safety. Uh, I mean, I, I can think of a couple things you can try to do with it. Uh, I don't know if it's worth doing that, though. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think that about sums it up. Yeah. Uh, so next we got Ashram's three cost, which is... This is a very, very odd three cost. So, okay, so when I first saw it, like, I actually did not really understand how it works because it's worded in such an odd way. So first off, uh, it is a 1.7 times damage single target attack, uh, and it gives Ashram Windride, which he definitely likes, and he also gives them a move again, uh, which he also really likes. And this skill can, has zero cooldown and can be used over and over as many times as you want, but each time you use it, the damage dealt by it is reduced by 15% uh, to a maximum of minus 30%. Uh, of course, this is very crippling for Ashram, who has zero damage plus in his kit. So uh, this does become significantly weak if you just decide to spam it repeatedly, but the big part of it is that if after you use it and you move again, it says if there are no enemies within one block of Ashram, the skill becomes decimate so when i first saw this i was a little confused i was like okay so so what is it does it just like morph back into the three cost again so no that's not how it works if you use this skill and you run away uh, the conversion from the three cost to decimate is permanent she lo he loses the three cost skill permanently for the rest of the map and it just becomes decimate which turns into counter strike which turns back into decimate as you need so yeah, that's, that, that's kind of interesting. They, they've never had a 3 cost quite like this. Uh, do you have any thoughts on that, just from that? Yeah, well, I mean, it is uh, it is as you have described it. Uh, it's a 1.7 times attack, which is the same as um, the non-decimate attack he has. Counter-strike or counter-attack or counter-something. Yeah, counter-strike, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it is a, a high multiplier attack. It doesn't really have, you know, it doesn't have any crazy added effects. The wind ride is fine. Yeah, when right's nice. The big thing, the big issue is he doesn't have any offensive one cost stuff. He doesn't have, you know, Legion or anything. Um, all of his one costs are defensive, you know, regeneration, blast, things like that. So you have to give up bringing three two cost skills, which, you know, mm -hmm. tons of people are bringing Dragon Breath and uh, Decimate and Counter Strike or Counter Attack or Counter whatever. I've already forgotten. Um, so you kind of are giving up a lot to have it. Um, I think one thing you didn't mention is after battle, he can move three blocks, and that is a pretty big thing for him. Um, oh, yeah, I, I did. I mentioned that oh, very you? short. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, yeah, that so is very nice. I think that's actually one of the most appealing things about the skill. Uh, it gives you the option to retreat back to your team. Obviously, then it becomes decimate, so you can't use it again. But just being able to retreat back is a big deal. And obviously, you can also use it to reposition uh, so that you're adjacent to an enemy after you kill another enemy and keep mm -hmm. the skill if you want it. Uh, it seemed like it might be nice for pushing damage in, like, Ancient Beckoning if you're still trying to push that, you know, just because you've got a zero cooldown um, attack skill, you know, you're, you'll stack up to minus 30% damage on it, but it's still 1.7 times damage attack. So it might actually be nice for him and things like that. That's true. What's, is within one block of this unit mean uh, within one ring, or is it literally just the cardinal directions? Uh, I believe it is right next. It has to be right next okay. to Okay, so, you know, if you're bringing him into Slepnir, um, that's kind of an issue during the moving phase because you can't yeah. avoid, you can't keep this three cost with it. So, I don't know. I mean, it's got some uses, but again, um, I think maybe maybe more than Lambda, even, because uh, she at least has the one cost that's the, her Forest Aura. Um, it seemed like it was a big trade-off to have to not bring three uh, two-cost skills. Yeah, uh, the one-cost skills on Ashram are like don't help him a whole lot uh reinforcement of course is just nice for sustain uh blast is actually kind of useless on him because he you know after him attacks first anyway so you know what am i gonna do with that mm -hmm. uh attack break can be nice if you want to just guarantee the attack first but yeah like like you said there is no uh there is no offensive one cost skill for him which can be a problem the way i see it is like you probably want to pair him with an act again character you basically slash and burn with the skill. You use it, you act again, you use it again, and then you just run away because you've kind of exhausted the use of it at its high power. And not if you used it twice, you got two revives on Ashram, and you know you just kind of go from there. Hopefully, you've killed like a tank or something by then, because I mean, 1.7 damage damage is pretty high, and mm -hmm. Ashram attacks first, which is pretty devastating. 
It seems fine. I, I don't know. It just doesn't... It's pretty uninspired, kind of. I mean, it's got a, a sort of unique mechanic where it turns into another skill <laughs> and then it's gone forever, but... Yeah. Oh, I got a good transition because you just said uninspired because we we're just about to get to Olivier's huh. three cost skill. Yeah, that's we got Olivier's. <laughs> that's about the. I, I make little notes on all this stuff, and uh, I've got two notes for Olivier, and the first one is uninspired, which probably triggered me to use the word myself. Oh <laughs> uh, God, what? Okay, what? What is up with this three cost skill for <laughs> Olivier? Like, like, okay, okay. To be fair, three range, four span, point three eight times damage. Like this. Do you, that's pretty nice. Like it's nice range, nice span, nice nice multiplier. But damn, is this like is this like such a boring three cost skill? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I will say like Olivier, like if if you're fighting against a team of flyers and stuff, like it, I mean, if you've seen him run in with like uh, the one skill, what was it called? Uh, Heartless Requiem. Yeah, Heartless Requiem. Like if he if he runs in with that, he can like just bust your flyers so hard with that. And if he can follow up with Roaring Bomb too, right after, mm -hmm. like your your team can be super dead. So I think um, it's an okay, th like even though it's kind of boring, it is an okay three cost. Like it is, it's it's a pretty good, it's a nice multiplier, uh, and it and the debuffs are pretty nice too. Yeah, I mean it's damage up, or damage taken up, and damage done down, and it's got. <laughs> It's so weird. It's got a 15% <laughs> chance to inflict unable to perform normal attacks on enemy heroes, so, uh, and that can't be dispelled, but it's just like, in PvP, people don't normally use normal attacks for most of their attacks. <laughs> like in PvE, yeah. if you're having a lot of trouble with something, you could keep on using that until you got lucky and kept some enemy from attacking you, but just like... Yeah. It's an interesting effect that almost never triggers, and in PvP almost doesn't ever matter. So, yeah, like you said, I mean, it's a 0.38 times AoE. It's a big AoE. Uh, it is solid uh, in terms of that. Uh, the only other note I had on it was that Olivier likes to take aim, so it's another... This character likes to bring a 1 cost. Having a 3 cost fills out that 6 cost, which... Uh, satisfies OCD people at the very least, I guess. <laughs> um, it's obviously a trade-off because you're not bringing an excitation then. Um, but Yeah, yeah, that is a problem. I mean, it's it's fine. I, it'll probably yeah, be used it's, it's... if you use Olivier. Yeah, if, if you like rushing with Olivier, this is okay. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's, I don't think it's bad at all. Uh, I mean, they even called it Roaring Bomb 2. Yep. Like, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> they they were so lazy with this one. <laughs> and uh, okay, everyone. So uh, Frontier wasn't with us for the first like half of the show, but he just joined us. Uh, you want to say hi? <laughs> I am definitely not late, no siree. It's just very quiet. <laughs> yeah, he was just, he was just super quiet. He was he was he was listening intently to us talking about all these three cost skills and stuff. But yes, talking to the sad affairs of Olivier's. All right, so uh, we just finished talking about Olivier's three cost, uh, which is so, and we just finished talking about all the three cost skills. So uh, let us let us move on to the new equipment they added, which is Renata and Shalinka's equipment. Uh, these two pieces of equipment are both really good. I mean, they've been they've been going kind of nuts with these new like exclusives the last couple months. Like, like they like it used to be that they would put like one crappy effect on some of them, and now it's just like all of them have like three effects. And like usually, there, there's at least one effect that's just really good. I guess I don't mind it in this case because Renata was definitely a character I feel like deserved a good exclusive. Although like, uh, I think she deserved. I actually think she deserved an even better exclusive than what she got. But uh, the Shalinka one is absolutely nuts, though. But let's start with Renata. So the Renata one, uh, first off, let's just say she gets her she gets the Meteor Strike faction buff. So it's similar to Hein's Helm, where you know it just adds a faction buff that she can receive. Which is nice because uh, Renata was sort of an assassin already, so she kind of slots nicely into a meteor strike uh, box. Now that she can receive the buff, not much to say about that. Mm -hmm. uh, so the other effects is the rest of the effects are completely revolving around her talent. Uh, it increases the duration of her debuffs by one, so her talent lasts two turns instead of one now. Uh, and of course, her uh, enhanced dragon seal or whatever also uh, lasts an extra turn now. Uh, and any anytime she triggers her talent, she gets Wind Ride, and immunity to silence and attack and intelligence decreases. So, uh, both these effects are really nice, but if you'll notice, 
it actually doesn't solve her biggest weakness, which is the fact that she is stonewalled by Gospel, stonewalled by Rosenseal, uh, mass cleanses can give her a hard time as well. So even though this, I think this is a very good helm, it she still has a lot of the same weaknesses she's always had. Uh, summed it up pretty well. Um, so, like you said, it's the her biggest issue is just getting her debuff on someone and getting it to stick there. Adding one turn of duration uh, is almost irrelevant. It already lasted two, I think. Um, yeah, I definitely like. That. Oh no, it only lasted one. So I mean, yeah, it only lasted. I one, guess that's so that's, it that's is bigger than going from two to three. Uh, it gives her more of a window. I mean, yeah, because you could just if you have it, you're just kind of targeting that one character, and you just like just end her. Right. So I mean, that's nice. Um, I think the biggest thing for her is probably just the meteor faction. She had oh yeah had issues getting a faction buff because it was. You know, Ares and Dark were basically her access to faction buffs, and now this patch she gets a new Tensei buff and Meteor buffs, so um, that definitely helps her out a lot. For my part, I, I've seen a couple Renatas in boxes, and usually if I see a Dark faction buff being picked, which obviously means either Liko or Bozo, uh, I almost like immediately ban Renata because like you don't want to deal with Renata if someone is spamming other debuffs because if there are other debuffs around Renata gets enabled really really well and she is going to run around and just kill everybody mm -hmm. uh with Meteor Strike I think that is a little bit less so because Meteor Strike is like it's like mostly assassins they don't do that many debuffs so uh I don't know how much the Meteor Strike faction buff will help her uh, but it, if you are running an, an assassin heavy box, uh, it is nice for her because it just gives her another avenue to be played. Uh, but I actually do think she works better with the dark faction buffers than, than Zerda. Look, you got the assassins, they kill the people that cast the gospels and dispel, <laughs> and then Renata kills everyone else. Easy peasy. Okay, got it. <laughs> Alright, Frontier, have you run into any Renatas yet? No. I'm okay. still on low silver. Don't don't talk to me. I have bad times with with debuffs. Oh, uh, I mean, right now, yeah, right now the the meta is, uh, yeah, the, right now the meta is pretty rough on everybody. I heard I heard like a lot of players are having trouble with this meta. Oh, uh, I, my, I, my, I saw you get very upset in the uh, scra strategy squad. This meta is making me super butthurt. Like, yeah, I <laughs> I finally reached Langrisser uh, this weekend. Like, it was it was it was a tough climb like damn yeah even like nitro had problems yeah it took me over 100 games to reach langris or this uh this I season just, i just want gold three i just want the skin uh, i've been cozy yeah. in gold three i haven't played i played five games this season i've been so you lazy know what? you you are you have made the wiser choice <laughs> uh you have preserved your sanity rather than deal with this meta <laughs> uh and on that note let's uh let's let's go to shalinka's uh, exclusive equipment. I actually faced one Shalinka this weekend who beat me pretty soundly. Uh, it was from uh, Hot, uh, Hate. Mm. Uh, his Shalinka is pretty pretty strong. Yeah, Shalinka. Like I've always felt that Shalinka is actually a really good character. Uh, she has a number of weaknesses, but uh, like I do think she was always a pretty good character. Uh, this helm is really really good. Like first off, it just gives you it just gives her plus twelve percent damage for free. Like there's no prereq whatsoever. It's just you get you get more damage. She gets buffs have duration plus one, which means her fleeting flash skill lasts two turns now, which is just that's that Jesus Christ, how horrifying. <laughs> uh, and uh, also when she if you kill her and she goes as a slumber, her buffs will not decrease in duration, which was also sort of a problem she had. Um, you know when she was in slumbers, if she take down her buffs enough, uh, you can just sometimes you can just sort of ignore her because when she woke up, it's just like oh she has no buff, she's not as threatening anymore. Uh, this obviously makes her better at revenge killing, uh, which of course is also scary. Uh, and as far as I know, uh, this was a concern I saw some people have when it first came out. As far as I know, the buff duration increase does not affect slumber, so no, this does not like make her sleep longer. Right. That would be so dumb well, if it did I'd, that. I'd actually I'd had that concern myself just because it looks like yeah. slumber is a buff, but also uh, if you read more of her skill. Uh, buff durations don't decrease at all when she's in slumber, so if it was affected by that, then she'd never get out of slumber. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is true. <laughs> that, would, that would be amazing. Just, you, you can't it's like, like her, a programming error. She just, just stays like, like dead on field. <laughs> <laughs> you just, you just leave her alone. 
Uh, but yeah, I mean, like, damage dealt plus 12% is kind of crazy to me, like, just for free, because, like, Shalinka's, to me, Shalinka's problem was never her kill potential. She is, she, her kill potential is actually really high to me. Uh, it's kind of nuts to me that they, they gave her just a free damage buff here. Uh, I mean, she was already one-shotting tanks, uh, assuming your opponent, like, positions poorly. And this right here, like, uh, I think if you use an Archer Shalinka, especially, like, you can pair Archer Shalinka. Archer Shalinka would probably be able to kill Landius pretty reliably with this damage increase, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, assuming, obviously assuming, like, you're, you're ignoring defense. Uh, but yeah, like, Shalinka... Uh, one of Shalinka's problems was always that uh, if she teleported forward and your opponent has a bunch of, like, uh, anti-range units of some kind, you know, they have any any sort of anti-range unit, any sort of long leg character, if you teleported her for forward, she, it, she, it was just sort of a free kill. Yeah. But uh, because of the slumber status, not decreasing buffs, uh, it means that you can teleport forward, uh, even if they kill you, you can run up to, to like, guard her or something, or, or something like that, like, and once she is... Uh, ready to go again, she will still have fleeting flash up, and she could just go do whatever the hell she wants from there. Yeah, it seems uh, seems pretty good. I don't know if this will cause people to raise Shalinka if they didn't already did that, because Shalinka is still a character who needs setup, and some people don't like that. I, I think this is scary. Like, I, I'm already I'm already scared of Shalinka, to be honest. Like, but, but that's probably because my box is, like, probably easily killed by Shalinka. So, yeah, uh, I don't got much else to say. What do you guys think? Oh, uh, no, I was just going to say the next raid up for her is somewhere near the beginning of December, hopefully for us. And um, you fought, Fjaller. Uh, it's a Deharto and Shalinka raid up banner. So do you, do you have her <laughs> at all? I have Dehart at six stars, yes, and he is my So most you could pull on this gate and pretty much know you will get a Shalinka even if you pull a Dehart. Well, then oh, again, I you have to pull one of, one of them. <laughs> That's not exactly how it works. Like, the, the other... the otherworldly shards or whatever they're called uh they only give you 50 shards for trade because that's how many you pull so you would actually need to pull two of the other banner character and then trade for 100 shards because it takes 60 to summon a character oh you're right yeah that's really it's, uh. yeah it's a little rough yeah, I, it, it, I had to do that for young yeah, jessica right. no i don't like that okay yeah, i was gonna pull but no i don't want to do that anyway yeah that's pretty much it's it's mostly there for whales so yeah. they, the whales don't I mean, get too mad when well they, if anybody wants to link and likes her and looks at the gear and she wants well she'll come soon yep yep and i mean with the trade thing you're basically losing 10 shards if you're planning on sharding them up anyway so it's not a huge thing if you're planning on building them if you're just getting the character for bonds then you've got 40 extra shards of theirs just sitting there making you sad yeah <laughs> all right uh well i don't think there's a whole lot else to say here uh so let's go on to these new soldiers they added Ah, uh, yes so first we got this uh lancer soldier uh, so first off, the, okay, some people like were kind of questioning me about the name I decided to give them, and people kept saying that it makes them think of prostate. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but okay, so here's the thing: like, I actually have no idea what they're gonna call them. Uh, I called them protostate because, like, that's the that's the closest thing I could like think to give them. Because okay, so here's what happened. Okay, in the original Langrisser games, the the final tier of Lancer soldiers are usually called phalanx, and that's what we got them called as well. They're called phalanx. Uh, but in the Chinese version of the game, phalanx are also actually called heavy lancers. Uh, so to kind of line up with heavy infantry, heavy cavalry, and got heavy lancers. So they released this new soldier, uh, which I called Protostate. But they, in Chinese, they're basically called like Roman phalanx or whatever. Yeah. So it's just like, okay, well, I can't translate them as phalanx because we already got phalanx. <laughs> so I, I called them Protostate, which is which was like a class of phalanx. I don't know what they're going to call them. Uh, it'd be pretty funny if they ended up calling them Heavy Lancers. Uh, <laughs> anyway, that, that's all I got to say about the, the name thing. Like that, That's why I named them something this weird. But yeah, I don't know what they're going to go with for the name. Mm -hmm. Just from looking at the... It's an attacking type versus oh, yeah. defending. So they could be called a Spartan. They'll all be Leonidas. <laughs> what, what's, what's, a good, what's a good meme from that movie you could call them? Well, there's only uh, one meme. Well, yeah. okay. I don't know if it's copyrighted, so I can't well, say it aloud. In this I video. mean, well, you, I guess they, you could call them Spartans, I guess. Yeah, that would, that would kind of be yeah. uh, that would, that would actually, breaking the that fourth would wall work. a little bit, maybe. Calling them Spartans would actually be fine. Would actually work just fine, mm -hmm. like in terms of what they decided to call them in Chinese. So, fine. Spartans would actually work. 
And and you know like the waiter the waiter like the, the waiter dress does kind of look like a Spartan I guess but a little bit. Spartan isn't as prostrate a name as Proto State. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so anyway, uh, like uh, like Frontier said a second ago, th- these are offensive lancers, but they're kind of weird. Okay, so let me explain. Like first off, uh, they got they got kind of well balanced stats in HP, defense, and attack. So they got just as much attack as Amazons, but they have more HP and defense and rock bottom magic defense. So and they got their tech increases both attack and defense. So they kind of built them to be a mixed troop. They're they're meant to be both tanky and offensive. So, but when you attack with them, the other portion says they get soldier damage plus 20%, which is really nice, but it also says ignore suppression effects. So when I first read this, I thought it just ignores disadvantages, but this is actually not true. What this does is that it completely negates all class effects for the entire unit when you're attacking. So if you are attacking a cavalry unit with Vargas with, with these lantern soldiers, you lose the advantage. And uh, someone tested it, and like they attacked with Lancer plus these soldiers. Uh, he actually did less damage when all these soldiers were dead and Vargas was just stabbing by himself. So, uh, obviously what this allows you to do is to attack into infantry soldiers with no fear. But it, it's definitely a really interesting new soldier. Because at first when I was looking at them, I thought they were just straight up better than Amazons as far as offensive Lancer troops go. But because of just this one effect they have, it's kind of odd because like because if you were going to use a lancer offensive soldier like you would never use a lancer offensive soldier just for its own sake you're using it because you are expecting to kill a cavalry of some kind right. so the fact that these soldiers lose out on the cavalry bonus or like the advantage is actually a huge hit against them in terms of uh choosing them purely for offensive purposes right. so you would actually only choose them for mixed reasons i think yeah lancers do not have good offensive techs in the tech tree so it's pretty much just you're trying to get that uh advantage which they do not ever get <laughs> and even here they're new troops they don't get it they're uh they're more offensive than defensive i would say i mean their bulk is their physical bulk is fine but i think more offensive than defensive is a fair description yeah. and kind of the only really offense focused unit that gets them a shell tier um you know other, you know vargas can do some damage uh bernhardt can do some damage but uh shell yeah, is kind of ultimately the only... yeah all all of these characters like like half these characters are like off tanks basically mm-hmm. bernhardt off tank dps ultimate or off tank dps emmerich off tank dps uh you know emmerich does have damage increase when he's attacking so or, or attack increase rather i think it was uh, so I actually think uh, they would they would be able to do a decent bit of damage with these, but the thing is, is like like you said, like no advantage is kind of lame, and uh, like uh, and as you pointed out, the distribution of these soldiers, uh, they pretty much gave them all to characters who did not have Amazons aside from Shaltier. But like at first, I thought they they would be better for Shaltier than Amazons, but now that like now that I realize that they got no advantage, like I'm kind of wondering about that. Right. I mean, they make Shaltier more flexible in terms of what she can attack but uh you know she doesn't have that huge advantage against the cavalry landius for instance i guess i guess the thing is is like if you were if you were looking to have a generic soldier choice on shelter it would probably be either vampire bats or uh or gargoyles uh this is a choice for her to be a little bit i guess to still have a lancer troop out front uh I guess for for I guess uh, I mean defensively obviously they still get the class advantages and disadvantages so defensively they still get crushed by infantry and they can still block cavalry so you got that yeah they keep those Werners from like, guard ignoring and killing you <laughs> <laughs> yeah I gotta look out for them yeah I mean I, like when I first saw them I thought they were like straight upgrades over Amazons but now that like I realize that the the effect is actually for both advantageous and disadvantageous effects i just i don't i don't know how useful they will be i think they're okay uh, i think they will have some use although the distribution like i said is kind of weird and hilda has you know hilda gets these but i think hilda has much better choices to go with than these so uh yeah i i uh they're okay is i guess is, is my is my final feeling on them any final yeah. thoughts here also uh they probably not going to be the first thing you build probably need a new character that can leverage them in some new way before people want to sink resources into them yeah that's my thing i'm like i'll get them to five and like don't touch them after that 
The nice thing is, I mean, the only nice thing is that if you're attacking, you don't have to predict your opponent's soldiers or whatever, and you'll deal neutral damage all the time. But, uh, yeah, I mean, but if you wanted that, you probably would have brought, like, some kind of flyer troop anyway. Okay, uh, so, next we got this, uh, this Viking soldier, which is a new infantry soldier. Uh, yeah, I, this is also very, this, this soldier is very straightforward, very high base attack, very high attack bonus. And that is pretty much all there is to say. <laughs> it's it's just a it's huge attack bonus. I mean, they do get defense if you're attacking someone with higher HP. But the nice thing is that no matter whether you're attacking something with equal, lower, or higher HP, they will always get some amount of attack. So they, you know, it's not like it's not like you know those stupid orc berserkers or whatever, or or cyclops rather. Like if if where you have to have more HP, they will always get some kind of effect. Mm -hmm. Uh, the only thing I will say is that the distribution is like, what is this distribution even? Like, what? Kirikaze and Lewin? Okay. And then Lamford? And, and Sakura? Like, I don't think so Sakura is never going to use these. Like, Sakura, like, I, I don't think these are good for Sakura at all. Sakura wants, like, Sakura wants soldiers that have some kind of enemy phase output to me, uh, so that you can, like, sort of, uh, uh, scare people from attacking you, and, you know, Vikings are, on, like, they, they get their bonus on attacking, so... Uh, I think Sakura is much better off using something like uh, Zealots or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they're pretty much exclusively good for Landford at the moment. Um, yeah. And they yeah, are they're exactly certainly they are his best exactly. infantry troop, um, so they give him an option that isn't <laughs> uh, Steel Wings now, at least. Um, if you're trying to... Well, you don't, you, you don't, you don't like Berserkers? <laughs> uh, I have level 10 Berserkers. <laughs> that's, Rip. that's all I want to say about that. Okay. <laughs> R.I.P. in peace. <laughs> yeah, like a lot of people were, were were tricked into leveling berserkers near the start of the game because like there were like some meme lords that were like uh, that were like, uh, hey, these berserkers are really good for Lanford. It's like the people who recommended trading Heaven's Guard for Uller's bow, like Uller's bow Luna or whatever. It's it's like the it's like when people actually tried it, it's like the memest thing ever. <laughs> yeah, oh, well. I, yeah, I was told that. Yeah, go go Heaven's Guard. But no, yeah, Lanford has, you know, his chain lightning that is crit dependent, and then it's like, here's yeah. the crit infantry, those are for Lanford. Don't don't <laughs> think about it, just sink those mats in there, it'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, they're they're a good choice if you're like facing off against a juggler or something. Like if you manage to ban all the uh if you manage if you ban La Landius plus uh Hilda and you face juggler, yeah, sure, bring these. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I mean, they've got uh, one thing is they've got 48 base HE and, you know, 20 base defense, 19 magic defense. So they are pretty bulky, too. Um, yeah, those defenses are pretty low, but, like, that HP is really nice, uh, which I guess makes sense. They're Vikings. <laughs> mm -hmm. going, so, going I mean, the they seem like a solid choice. They'll, they're only at four units right now, so they probably have plans to release some units that also have them as an option. One thing I noticed about the new soldiers they added this patch is that they seem to add, they're, they're pretty much, a lot of them are pretty much being added to, like, lesser used characters. I guess they're just sort of oh, yeah. off people, like, uh, through through these soldier choices. I will say, I do like their sprite, the Vikings. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's... Oh, also, the attack animation for the Vikings, they appear to strike with the back of their axe. Wait, do they? Hold on. I don't know. That's what they've got on Wikigris right now. I would, I trust those guys. All the always. Oh, you're right. You're right. Um, <laughs> it does look like it. So they're so maybe, manly maybe. that they can't. They're not going to strike you with the front of the axe. <laughs> it's, like, it's the blunt side of the axe. They want you to die a slow and painful death. Oh, that is Vikings. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Next. Next people. All right. So next we got these faceless assassins. Uh, these are just like okay. So these guys are just like basically straight up upgrades to bandits, in my opinion. Yep. They got. Yeah, they got 15% attack, just like bandits. They got critical hit rate plus 15%, which is less than bandits, but they also inflict a 15% increased chance of being critically hit. So I guess against someone who has a gospel or something, uh, you know, mm -hmm. this might not work as well. Uh, they will have less crit rate than bandits, but overall, like, they have higher base attack. They have the same amount of attack bonus. Uh, I think they are just straight up better bandits. Yeah, they're bandits the 2.0, almost strictly better. Um, I think, yeah, they are less bulky than bandits, um, <laughs> 36 base HP versus 40 base HP, but, uh, mm -hmm. um, also worth noting since they inflict that plus 15% chance of being critically hit, that helps whoever, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They their hero. It improves the hero's crit rate as well, yep. yeah, that's a good point. 
Uh, but like uh, like with the last two troops, the distribution here. Uh, I mean, just take a look: D Heart, Silver Wolf, Ferekia, Tsubame, uh, Shalinka, Purotes, Roga. <laughs> oh, you don't have Sigma <laughs> listed there. Uh, I I didn't list Sigma there. Yeah, like as uh, uh, Sigma does get these troops on, on his SP class. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, what what troops? Uh, did we already talk about Sigma? We have not talked about. Uh, Sigma. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll get to Sigma right after this, actually. So yeah. don't worry about it. <clears throat> But uh, as as for the as for these units that just got them, uh, D Heart. I mean, like obviously, if D Heart wants to use them, he has to go back into his assassin class, which I guess that's fine, you know. But he loses. He obviously, he loses a ton of his range. So I don't know how useful that will be. You got Silver Wolf, who nobody uses. You got Farikia, who uh, I don't. I actually don't think these are that useful for Farikia. She probably wants like Sorks still. Uh, Tsubame. Uh, I don't think Tsubame's problem was ever that she had trouble killing things. <laughs> uh, it's just that she, it's just that, she, you know, she like disappears and then like she teleports behind you, or she doesn't even teleport away. She walks behind you, mm -hmm. and uh, hopes you don't have AOE. The, yeah, I hope you have you don't have AOE. But I guess like sure, why not give it to Tsubame? It doesn't really help her. <laughs> it doesn't solve the biggest problem she's facing. Uh, Shalinka, sure. I mean, Shalinka, it, it's decent for Shalinka. Uh, Pure Tess. I, I, I mean, Pure Tess didn't even have bandits, which was one of the things I've always wondered about. It's just like Pure Tess, <laughs> like, like Pure Tess was always one of those characters. Like they, they, these like, they really gave her the short end of the stick. So it's nice that they've decided to give her a solid assassin troop to work with here. Uh, I don't know. I don't think these are gonna save her, but I guess for those, for those like five Pure Tess fans out there who really want to make her work, you know. Yeah, you got some new troops. Yeah, I mean they're they're good troops. They're not on maybe everyone you'd like them to be on, but yeah, I mean I mean I guess if they put them on, I guess they thought it would have been too busted to give them to like Zarada and stuff. <laughs> yeah, but they or, or, right. or, I mean, or like hate. Be if hard. you put them on Omega, that'd be crazy too. You know, he's he's yeah, got his Dark Elven snipers, God. which are crazy at 100 percent HP, but then yeah, suck but otherwise. Mean, yeah, or or on Hie, Hie would love these. Mm -hmm. But uh, I guess they they were uh, wise Bouncing enough act. to not give these to EA. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I think we're just about done with these uh, troops. Any final thoughts you got here, Hasso? I think that covers it. All right, uh, Frontier. You got any final thoughts on these troops before we move on? Uh, definitely just like the sprite work. They really look really nice to me. All right. Yeah, yeah. They look pretty cool. Yeah. Besides that, uh. I'll probably do the faceless assassins because I don't have bandits up. I yeah, use I'll, use... I already have bandits trained, but I might have to train these anyway, just because. You know, yeah. They, they seem. I mean, if I want to use Sigma, or or if I want, and it'll be nice for D Hard, I guess. If I ever want to use D Hard again, for some reason. All right, uh, all right, Hasso, <laughs> it's what it's what you've been waiting for. Oh this is, we're we're moving on to SB Sigma. All right, all right, Sigma. Last time, last time you you said justice for Sigma, uh -huh. and they have they have brought him justice. Well, Sigma is one of the first ones up yes. to get an SB hero. What, what have they done uh, to my boy? <laughs> <laughs> all right, do you want to do, uh, do you want to start off? Okay, and just tell us. What? Yeah. So, um, goodbye, normal Sigma. You were. Uh, you were a unit that nobody used, um, <laughs> <laughs> but this SP, you know, we were just talking about, oh, maybe you could use Lancer Elwin now, you know, maybe it's time to give the cavalry up a little bit, but uh, I can't see anyone ever wanting to use uh, normal Sigma. And with the SP, the SP Sigma has higher base attack, which is a big deal. It's got, it's an assassin, so it's not uh, completely destroyed by every cavalry unit ever. Um, and I just, the new skills on this unit basically just don't work at all for old Sigma. So he gets yeah. basically nothing out of it if he is not in his assassin class now. Um, his assassin class, uh, you know, the new talent, uh, gives him two range and plus one movement if he does not attack. So he gets a buff, you know, that gives him that. So he can effectively move four and then attack from four away. Uh, his skills also have that plus two range. So his four range skills become six range, which is just the same range as his original class, um, right. his original talent. Uh, he also has that weird, he gets physical damage taken minus 30% after attacking. Um, so 
I mean, there's just very little reason to use the old Sigma. Uh, he, the new one cannot turn sick turn cycle so there was this dumb thing you could do with old sigma where you'd take three turns mm. every turn um so your cooldowns would come back really fast and you could do some weird stuff with it uh so that's the only thing that it can't do but instead it just has better everything <laughs> so it's big th it's big shtick is it's got a one cost passive a hunting shadow Gives him 15% more skill, and then if this unit has Shadow Murder, which is the buff of his talent because he is just the edgiest boy now, um, when actively attacking, his assassin type soldiers will range attack alongside him, and this unit may ignore guard for up t for attacks up to three spaces away. So he can ignore guard three spaces away, and he has the plus one mobility from his talent, so he's effectively kind of... Uh, got seven threat range that way <clears throat> to ignore guard, but then his active skill that came with his new SP is Shadow Killer's Duel. It's the two cost. Uh, it has three range, which is then increased by three from his talent, so five range. And the active on that teleports self to a block within one space of an enemy with Ranger's Mark, which is the debuff portion of his three cost ability. So you are basically required to bring your three cost to have the skill do anything. Uh, but it teleports within one s space of an enemy and then attacks for 1.4 times damage. Before entering battle, uh, the unit becomes unaffected by melee penalty effects. Uh, so you get your free uh, extreme magic bow. And then if the unit has shadow murder, his new talents buff, uh, in battle both units will not have their soldiers attack and the heroes will instead directly attack each other. After battle, it restores 50% health and gets plus 50% counter damage and movement plus 3 for one turn. So, basically, uh, at first blush, it looks kind of like he's locked into one skill set, which is his three cost, because he needs that for Shadow Killer's duel, he needs Hunting Shadow to ignore Guard Doll, and then he needs Shadow Killer duel, um, which he can use from five away, which he then teleports, so he's then less than three squares away, so he can ignore um, Guard and attack the enemy hero directly. The big problem with that is the animation on Shadow Killer's duel is a little slow. It's not like super slow, mm, but yeah. uh, slower than it could be, I guess. Um, if you try yeah. to use it on a Yusuke, Yusuke will kill you before you hit him <laughs> at all. Yes. Um, yes. Yusuke obviously has the fastest basic attack in the game, so uh, not always a big issue, but even like flyers will hit him three of their four whirlwinds, so he gets 15 hits from flyers. He gets hit by sonic waves from infantry. Um, he gets hit by a lot of things. He, if he's attacking into yeah. an other assassin, the other assassin's going to hit him entirely. So, um, it's pretty limiting in what he can actually attack with it. So you went through a lot. You went through basically his entire kit. Mm -hmm. uh, let me just start by saying, like, I am a little bit disappointed with the route they decided to go with SP Sigma in the sense that you said that base Sigma basically has no use anymore because, yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I was kind of hoping, you know, SP Elwin came out and. You know, Elwin, even though SP Elwin is very good, his base classes still had, you know, some unique things they could offer using the skills from the SP class. Mm -hmm. uh, SP Freya, like, I guess you always want her SP class, but like, she's an SR unit, so I can, I can, I can, like, I, I, I get it. But it's like, with this character, I, I feel like it's such a wasted opportunity that they didn't still, like, it would been, it would have been nice if the skills also allowed to pierce guard while he is under the snipe effect from his original class because i mean i don't think that would even be broken in any way like you know like yeah they kind of have things designed to try to force you into that one sort of skill setup um you know oh you need the three cost buff to get to be able to use this skill at all and you need the hunting mm -hmm. shadow to be able to ignore the guard at all and you know just yeah. over and over oh you better bring all this crap together and then the shadow killers duel kind of has a mediocre payoff because uh you're still vulnerable to dying. So, ways to fix that. Either you focus on making your Sigma a big beefy boy. Um, he, you know, if, as a leather armor user, can have last right. So that's 40% damage reduction. If you enchant him with rough seas, you get another 15% damage reduction. So then that's 55%. You could mm. actually use Hydra's bow on him because he has a built-in oh. extreme magic bow. And then you'd actually, if it tr if it procs, you reduce that down to uh, negative 85% damage taken. So, 
Um, I mean, you could go that way. Obviously, it's spooky if you're gambling on uh, a 50-50 proc to survive or not. Um, but that is an option. Obviously, his hunting shadow lets him ignore guard up to three spaces away, so if you bring in your three costs anyway, you can just use that from three spaces away. And that makes you mostly safe for most things, so... That's another option um, if you don't want to try to teleport behind someone and potentially just die horribly. <laughs> so obviously, with the counterattack damage plus 50% and his the breaking of his um, talent buff giving him physical damage taken minus 30%, kind of the idea is you'd go in, assassinate someone, and then either you know punish someone for attacking you with the plus 50 percent damage buff and then also just be able to run off so you know you attack someone at the end of a turn and then run away and rinse and repeat mm. um so i was thinking about a few things there's a big benefit uh in that this new sp sigma attacks on the turn that he uh is acting on so you know the other sigma triggers talent and it'd be a new turn so this one uh, can keep one turn buffs while he's attacking. So King's Crown or the Amelda Talent both uh, still mm. benefit from him. So that is uh, a major advantage. Oh, he has good heart bonds too. When he's attacking, 10% more damage. When he's attacking, 10% less damage taken. Um, well, yeah, so... Well, the, the one, it's when attacked, actually, uh, oh. for, for the damage. Oh, it is. So that, that is to facilitate him being becoming scarier when he's counted, mm -hmm. oh, after he's done using the duel. Yeah. Uh, and like... Uh, and you mentioned like it is it is a very risky skill and uh, the devs actually had like some some like comments when they when they released the character and they basically said that's pretty much their intent. Their intent is for the skill to be a super high risk and super high reward skill. Uh, if you manage to kill something with the skill and you survive, Sigma becomes incredibly dangerous. Uh, you know he gets the damage reduction from his talent. He gets counter attack damage plus fifty percent. He has an extreme magic bow effect. And, you know, if you don't kill him, he's just going to run away. So, and of course, being an assassin, his normal attack is quite fast as well. Yeah, I've seen videos so, of him counter-killing Yulia before she can do anything to him. Yeah, so it is it is definitely a very interesting skill. Like, it, like it's not as crazy as it might first seem because, like, you're attacking... Like, usually when people see attack hero directly skills, they think, like, oh, this kills stuff for sure. But because of the way this works, it's like, it's actually a super risky... You run the risk of just Sigma just getting yeeted by, just <laughs> getting yeeted by, especially by Yusuke, as you said. Mm -hmm. uh, but like, but of course, because the skill is not quite fast enough, uh, he can get killed. He can, uh, he can get the double K he can get double KO'd by other assassins. He can get double KO'd by infantry. He can get double KO'd by uh, flyers. He probably gets double KO'd by like calves as well. Uh, like, yeah, I'm not sure uh, about that. It's, uh... Yeah, yeah, the the animations is kind of hard yeah. to target for that one. I tried to look but up yeah, some videos, like, but you know, there's limited access, and I, I don't speak Chinese yeah. or anything. So I was, yeah. you know, went to the Chinese wiki, looked up how to spell <laughs> Sigma in uh, Chinese, uh, and <laughs> yeah. did my best. But, um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this this skill has like I will say like this skill has a really high kill potential. We've already been seeing some screenshots of. Sigma using this skill and bringing jugglers down to like like ten percent HP with this, but that was using an extreme magic bow. But as as mentioned, he doesn't need to use extreme magic bow with this skill. So because of the skill increase in his one cost passive, it's very clear that they intended for Sigma to be using that crystal dagger uh, that crystal dagger weapon. Uh, the and of course crystal dagger against like a tank, like you're gonna ignore your. They probably have high enough defense that it is you're getting a lot of mileage out of that defense ignore. Uh, and I would not be surprised if a Crystal Dagger Sigma that is built well is going to consistently take out, like, jugglers. Uh, juggler at the very least, for sure. Uh, possibly even, like, Landius. You know, Landius does not have that much melee reduction. Uh, you know, Leden, Leden's probably dead, too. Like, I, I this, this, this could probably kill tanks. Like, yeah, so, definitely it needs a lot of testing, and, you know, since he is yeah. an assassin, he doesn't have any, uh, you know, penalties for attacking any particular class, which is pretty nice. I mean, obviously he doesn't have any advantages either, but mm -hmm. uh, for consistency's sake, that's very nice to not have to try to do that gamble. So, and 
for a while, you know, I was thinking, well, he can't, you can't use Old Sigma with any of this new crap. It doesn't help him at all. So I kind of started thinking about things from the other perspective, which is if you can't use any of his new crap in his old class, maybe you can use his old crap in his new oh, class. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, I think, I actually think, I mean, SB Sigma does the same role as the original Sigma could, which is like zoning and anti rush. He does that just as well as the original Sigma. I think uh, possibly even better because, like, you don't have to, you don't need a forest tile around to activate him. Right. You just need to end his turn, and he'll have his six range strong wind snipe and his six range, uh, you know, three cost skill. Right. So, so he can zone people just as well. Yep. You can bring uh, three cost ranger's heart and strong wind snipe. Still, you're stuck on cyborgs then because you don't have the passive that lets assassins attack with you, but you can mm -hmm. um, do both two turns in a row without having to do this weird three turn cycling thing because you've got you know first turn you get the buff that gives you plus two range and then you attack with it and lose it and then uh, next turn you can use ranger's heart which then will give you that buff back and then use your other six range skill um, so you can do anti-rush with that um, if you're attacking at the end of a turn you can potentially kill tanks that way you know he's got 600 base attack so he's got solid attack there uh, unless you're attacking into cavalry troops again because he's pretty much stuck on cyborgs um, you can actually do pretty punishing damage to like a juggler or something that way. It'd be difficult to one-shot, but since he can follow up two turns in a row, it can be uh, hard to keep up with all that. So other options mm -hmm. would be if you brought um, your three cost and hunting shadow and neutralizing fire, you'd be stuck with only seven threat range then, you know, your four mobility plus uh, three range, but you can, you know, three cost someone uh, your hunting shadow is still active to ignore guard, and then you can use neutralizing fire to break 100% effects, and you'd have the 15% damage from your three costs that way. Hmm. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be a very popular skill set, but it seemed like an option. Yeah. Uh, other option, I guess, would be like hunting shadow and ranger's heart, um, but then you're stuck on one attack skill, so like your three cost or neutralizing fire or just a passive or something, but that way you could ignore guard two turns in a row in rapid succession uh, mm. with the ranger's heart again. So, I mean, there are some options, but most of the time, I would say 95% of the time, you're probably just going to see him with three cost and his two new skills. Okay, so one final thing I guess I want to ask about wh what your opinion on is, uh, yeah, like you said, he, he definitely, like, when you really look at his entire kit, he has a lot of different builds you can go for. Uh, even though, like, if you want to assassinate, uh, you probably will be sticking to one kit most of the time. But, like, it kind of made me wonder, the, the way his dual skill works, like, it, I'm, I'm, I'm really stuck on what accessory he should be taking. Mm. Because you got, like, you got Twilight Star, which uh, can break last rights for him, of course. Uh, but, the, but, of course, if you're going to use the dual skill, a Twilight Star is incredibly dangerous. It has no bulk stats whatsoever. Uh, some people have con even joked that he should be using Bracer. <laughs> because uh, you you want to like if if there, if someone's if he's attacking someone with mirror armor he's completely boned, uh, so bracer would save him. Uh, you know you can go with the standard classic judge talisman or slayer's emblem. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't know what. Uh, yeah, do you have any thoughts on that? Like, what do you think? Because right now I think a Twilight Star is actually really good for Sigma just to ding like Listel and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, good question. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> so even Lone Star Armlet would be an option because you get the attack and defense plus 10% when oh, there yeah, are no yeah. allies that's within good, two squares. Uh, and it's got the 509 HP, so it's got some bulk to it and the defense bulk to it. Um, that's a good point. Yeah. I don't know. It's uh, They all have trade-offs. But, um, I mean, if you want to kill you know, Listel, you probably still need that. Uh, Twilight Star Ding, if you want to kill um, anyone with Shrine Maidens, then you're not doing that with his Assassin kit without uh, breaking them. So, I mean, they're all trade-offs, and it just kind of depends on what you, what's popular at the time, what you think you need to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> mm. Alright. Well, uh, Frontier, do you have anything you want to add about SP Sigma? Uh... I own him. That's it. <laughs> All like, right, three star. Uh, three star. Uh, I I I don't even think I know. I I have his FB buff. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I I sharded Sigma to six stars because I'm a protag player. And once I got him to six stars, I was like, I'm fi I finally have six star Sigma. And then I placed him in in the bench. 
and I never <laughs> used him. Rude. Uh, uh, so, okay, uh, what do you guys think of his new uh, design? Do you like his uh, nothing personal oh, I, I kid definitely do outfit? like his, his artwork. It's phenomenal. Okay. It's fine. It's it's edgy boy Sigma, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He, he traded in the emo haircut and the, the fancy and the fancy noble clothes for for nothing personal little kid <laughs> and he's and he's like a thundercat now because he has like he has like robot cat legs or something <laughs> yeah he got, he got mad at card over canceling so uh, he, he became it himself all right <laughs> all right so uh, I think that's all we got about SP Sigma so next we uh, are gonna talk about this event that was held on the Chinese server real quick. So this was, uh, let me upload two images real quick. So this was a uh, SP hero voting uh, event, like they said they would have at some point. Uh, unfortunately, this was only accessible to Chinese players. I had considered making a PSA about it, but I kind of felt like, well, what's the point? Like, only Chinese players can vote on it. But uh, basically, the only thing I got to say about that aspect of it is that I talked to uh, our local our local team, like Azrael and uh, Claude, who are like our local like uh, what is it uh, community directs? CMs? Yeah, they're they're they're, they're like CMs, mm-hmm. and I think they're also on a dev team. But basically, I asked them, you know, can you talk to the Chinese office about it? And they said, yeah, we'll we'll message them. And yeah, I don't expect them to respond, but that's the extent of what I can do about it, and probably the extent of what they can do about it. So hopefully, you know, they usually don't listen, but hopefully they'll listen because this isn't just something that affects global. This affects you know every every region. You know, like, and everybody, everybody wants to have a say on what the SP hero will be. But uh, anyway, for this first voting, they gave a curated list of these five heroes, which is Lewin, Hein, Egbert, Lance, and Emmerich. And as you can see in this image, uh, Lewin and Hein made it past the first round. And then in the second round, uh, Hein soundly defeated Lewin. Uh, so for for Lewin and Hein on this screenshot, they actually wrote out what they planned on doing. If they won. So I am not going to explain the Lewin part of this image because that would just lead to pain and suffering for <laughs> Lewin fans because you're not yeah, getting him. Same. Uh, <laughs> uh, but for SB Hine, so SB Hine is pretty much confirmed now. So uh, l- l- I'll go down the list of what they said they will do for him. Uh, so number one says he is going to keep his mage class and at the start of every battle, he will have maximum stacks for his gain knowledge skill, uh, talent. So at the, so he doesn't have to sit around for like five turns before he's at max power now. Uh, the second bullet point says that uh, they will have some kind of method for him to increase his skill range and damage, or, or skill range and span rather. So uh, similar to, I guess, uh, I don't know if I actually don't think anybody else has something similar. A lot of other people have skill range increase, but not a lot of people have skill span increase. So we don't know exactly how that will happen, but that's what they said they will be doing it. Uh, and finally, they will say they are going to give him one of the selection skills. So similar to Ainz's three cost skill, so Terra's three cost, Hilda's three cost, those are all selection skills where you click on it and it has multiple skills in it. They said this will have three parts to it it will have a teleport skill. It will have a single target attack and an AOE attack. Uh, yeah, and that is their general. That's what they said the general direction for Hein will be. Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty much expected. When I saw, like, when I first saw these five characters being put up, I was like, there is no way Hein is not going to win because, like, Hein is super popular character from the most popular language or game. So, yeah, uh, get ready for SP Hein. Uh, what do you guys think of their general direction for Hein? Um, well. Making skills that are three, skill, three skills certainly uh, kind of addresses the issue of how do you uh, fix a whole character with um, just two new skills, I suppose. And I mean, as much, no offense to Lewin fans or anything, but I've, I've said it before, <laughs> there's just... Lewin has nothing to build off of. Like, Hein has his <laughs> exclusive item, he's got his 3C already... He's got, you know, a teleport that is, you know, not unique, but certainly not a common skill to have. And now I guess he's going to have another teleport from his 3C anyway. Mm -hmm. But, like, when you get to an R character, they're not going to have an exclusive, they're not going to have a 3C, and most of their skills are very bare bones basic so it's just like yeah, yeah they have to rebuild the entire character from scratch yeah, yeah uh, i mean and, and heinz like base kit isn't even bad like he has lightning he has fireball which are both pretty good spells uh you know cleanse is really good uh meteor is okay uh 
he has forget, which is occasionally good. Uh, so you know, he, I think his kit is his base kit is actually like it, he doesn't have any crazy skills in it, but it, but it definitely is like good. Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, I I I used Hind a lot for PVE early on in the game. Uh, I would uh, if S two was around, he would be be very happy uh, <laughs> right now because uh, S two is uh, is like a Hind main. Mm. Uh, S two really likes Hind. Uh, and Hein is a very popular character, so I think uh, people will be happy about Hein getting an SP, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. All right. Uh, uh, Frontier, you have anything you want to say about SP Hein, potentially? Uh, I just need to continue building him, I guess. <laughs> yeah, All right. I'm kind of interested what his talent will be, if he already comes with full stacks of his gain knowledge, or if that'll be part of his talent. I'm gonna guess it's gonna like the gain knowledge itself will have the same effect, and it'll probably say something like, "If he has gain knowledge, he will also have these other effects." Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm expecting. Yep. Okay. So uh, that's well, that is most of the uh, new characters and all the soldiers and stuff out of the way. Let's talk about the actual content they added. Uh, first, let's I'll just talk a little bit about some minor changes they added. First, they added a multiplayer repeat button. Uh, so they. Bef a little, a few months back, they added a auto repeat function. Uh, that function is not very useful unless you have like people you you play with in a private room, because the way that function worked was that it would like automatically scroll back to the like the map screen, and then the game would like automatically reinvite everyone into a room. But if it was like an open room, it would not like immediately put them in. So like random people who were trying to automate like auto join a party would enter the room first so it would just it would just be a mess like it would like the, the auto repeat function for multiplayer was really bad unless you had a private room this function is like when you finish the map there will be like a little window on the corner of the screen which set which shows the three players that you had for the multiplayer game and it'll say like whether or not they want to play again and you just click i want to play again and you'll just repeat with them again so it's a better function for, for pickup groups, basically. So I think that's nice. So the other minor change they added was uh, Tensei was added to Slepnir. Uh Tensei being added to Slepnir actually changes quite a bit for that fight. Uh, in the past, I've said some things like how Rosalia is not a good investment compared to Leon for PvE players because she does not participate in Slepnir. That, of course, has changed. Rosalia is Tensei faction. She can now be in Slepnir. Uh, you know, you can bring, like... I don't know who else you could bring to Slepnir potentially. Uh, a, a Tensei Jessica would be pretty good in Slepnir, I think. Uh, just just shoot out, shoot him over and over. Mm -hmm. uh, let me think. What else? Werner is Werner is probably okay there. Uh, you know, like he can he, he has smash and he can he can move again and stuff. Uh, Albedo is in like oh, Albedo is also like a pretty solid tank you know you know Albedo is probably a better tank than Hilda actually like if you just want the tank to survive because uh like Albedo of course has like multiple layers of RNG shields and she's probably going to activate one of them against like the, that huge attack Slepnir does so Albedo has a pretty good chance of surviving against Slepnir's big attacks so you got that too uh yeah I think that's all I gotta say well uh, what do you think Hasso like for Tensei for Slepnir. Um, well, I mean, most of what you said sounds pretty solid. Um, Rosalia does have kind of the issue where in order to get her move again, she does have to use a skill, so it's not quite as useful as Leon's. But, mm -hmm. I mean, she's still a solid pick, and obviously you can use her along the side Leon. Um, she could easily take the place of Landford that a lot of people like to use, and she'd give that, you know, 10% stat bonus, so not quite as much, but you know, stat bonus along with sustain from her attacks, which helps top people off, which, you know, a lot of the time later on in Slepnir, part of the problem is just topping everyone off from all the AoE damage, so more access to that sort of thing is uh, very nice. And same thing with uh, Tensei Jessica, she's got a spammable skill that heals again, so... Alright, yeah, uh, yeah, I think that Tensei, Tensei does have a number of characters good for Slepnir, so I, we might see... Uh, I guess we're gonna have to ask the uh, I'm gonna have to ask the uh, ancient beckoning expert Loomis later and see see what he thinks of this. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, so Frontier, have you progressed at all in Slepnir? No, I still have a D because everyone hates because <laughs> the game hates me. 
Yeah, Slepnir is a tough fight. Yeah, you, the you gotta only have... one that have like a bad score in it. I'm kind of upset. <laughs> Slepnir is a tough fight. You need very specific characters to do well. In yeah. It. All right. Hey, hey, hey! If you get uh, if you get Hilda, you'll have a solid tank for it. Nice. If you go for Hilda. Uh, and if you try to get Albedo, Albedo is a good choice too. Oh, I'm yeah. going to try for Albedo. That's what oh, I. Right. That's what the fifty-two thousand right. crystals right. are for, dude. <laughs> All right. All right. I'm going Albe for all of them. Albedo is your waifu of choice for the next few months. Huh? <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so, all right. Let's get to the actual content they added, uh, or like the major content. Uh, there's no. There's still no new like big new PVE mode like like Ancient Beckoning in sight yet, which I think is kind of disappointing. I, I think it's about time they add something like that, but haven't seen anything like that yet. Uh, it's just they added a new Secret Realm event. Uh, not much to say here. It's it's a it's a Sherlock Holmes themed Secret Realm event, which I guess some people like because I saw like on Reddit that some people were excited for it. Yeah, you know. I mean, is Wyler in it? Yeah, we we it's yeah Wheeler is in like a Sherlock Holmes skin. Better because because <laughs> that's his costume. Just no, he's, he's not in it at all. He's like, wait, what? Yeah, um, I guess I don't I don't really know much about it yeah, is there any announcement of what the rewards are for it is there anything interesting oh, I, in that? I actually uh, I actually forgot to write it down let me let me let me just like log in it's going on right now yeah yeah it's 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 going on right now it's it's uh it actually just started like two or three days ago because uh, as usual the secret realm event comes out the week after the major patch like they, they usually comes out in the second week or whatever okay so this is a this is a points event it's not one of those dumb events where you have to get like four different types of items and you're just really mad because you have to sit there with a stupid spreadsheet and figure out yeah. which stage you need to run. Uh, so uh, it gives silver wolf shards, which, okay. okay. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, wheels of Fate. I see Wheels of, I see wheels of Fate. Uh, you know, some uh, Angen automatons, which are actually pretty useful. Uh, it gives like the bond flowers and stuff, which you know, like okay, sure, why not for like the newer players, I guess. And also gives like some of the, uh, it gives some of these uh, the magic clay item, which is for the like the display case mode, which is a stupid mode, and I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, main, so like there's no Aniki boxes this time. Uh, otherwise, oh. it's mostly like standard rewards. Like you get you get an SR accessory, you get an SR weapon, you get some crystals, uh, you get some red ore. Uh, and uh, this time you get wheels of fate. That's that's the thing. That's that's okay. the that's, that's the big that's reward the big this time, reward. I guess you could say. Okay, so all right, let's finish this off with one final thing. Uh, well, I guess this is technically a long-term like PVE content that they just added, but it is a new chapter to the Twisted Fate stages. Finally, they have added a third part to Twisted Fate, and as you can see to, from the um, from uh, as you can see from the image there. The five units that are starring in the Twisted Fate this time are Jessica, Normal Jessica, uh, Bozel, Altmiller, Liana, and Freya. Uh, yeah, I don't have a lot to say there aside from this is just, uh, it's nice for people who are uh, missing controllers or challenge points and you need to get some more. Also, all those are characters that people have probably built up by now. Uh, well, the nice thing is that, of course, it's nice that uh, Jessica and Freya are there because everybody can, pretty much everybody will have them, uh, and, or it's like you can build them. And uh, Liana, almost everybody has Liana. Uh, Bozel, Bozel is pretty commonly built, so I, I don't think that's a problem. Ultimate I think, is a bit less common of a character people build, but hope, uh, I haven't tried the stage yet, so I don't know how like hard it is with uh, with like a three star alt. Ultimate, which I actually do have on my Chinese account, but my Chinese account is super weak right now, so I, I barely, I don't, I barely actually play the account. I mostly just log into it and just like check what new stuff they added. But yeah, uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a way for people to get controllers again. Uh, nice, good. I need more of them. <laughs> I'm broke all day. All right. Also, you still alive? He's dead. Oh, no. We killed him. Oh, I think I muted myself. Uh-oh. <clears throat> oh, no. I oh, am no. here. I am alive. I was making uh, right. inappropriate noises or something, probably. So, oh, okay. <clears throat> um, but, I mean, not a whole lot to add there. A bunch of old SSRs. Newer players might be sad that there's, like, this Altamirler sitting here being all like, <laughs> I hope you built me. <laughs> well, uh, at least at least they were nice and gave Bolzo and Liana, who are, like, two very, very good investments for any player, I think. 
uh, whether it's for PvE or PvP, so that's that's nice at least. Alright, uh, and that, I believe, is pretty much everything I have to say about this patch. Do you have any f overall thoughts you have for this, Hasso? Did you mute yourself oh again, Oh my Hasso? god, I didn't. I, know I caught myself before I did. I was just slowing the, the draw there. Um, I think you'll probably <laughs> see a lot more Sigmas with the, uh, the change. <laughs> it's kind of a, a bittersweet thing because, I mean, it, he kind of can do the same things he already did, and he has other stuff mm. now too, but it just they really did make it so that you're using SP Sigma, and there's nothing that you can take from this for old Sigma, and no reason to use the old Sigma, pretty much. Well, you use Archer Sigma for H and M, and that's pretty much, I think, pretty much the only thing left to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, how about you, Frontier? You have anything you're excited for from this patch? Probably guess... the, the 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 equipment. Yeah. Uh, this new troops just faceless. Definitely the Tinsen for Slepnir, because if I ever pull one of them, then I might be able to do better than that. All right. Uh, Sigma and high in SP. Definitely going to have to look into them. Might actually decide to build Sigma. Who knows? All right. I, I have one, I guess one final thing before we finish off is one thing. I, I, I don't think I remembered to mention this, but uh, if you are interested in Hilda, which I know most of you probably are, uh, next month, for us uh, on Global, we are getting Florentia, and Florentia is one of the Bond characters for Hilda. So you are going to need to make some decisions with your crystals. Do I need to get Florentia to get uh, to power up Hilda? Uh, and okay. That is a problem because Florentia so far, I mean, unless we see a Florentia focus banner on the horizon sometime. Uh, uh, yeah, you're going to need to get Florentia next month, which is a big rip for our crystals. Because everybody just, every a bunch of people just blew their crystals getting Sage Landius. So yeah, uh, and people are trying to save for Overlord too. That's the thing, and uh, so yeah, it's it's uh it's gonna be some rough decisions the next couple of months because there's there's like one really good character on every banner for the next couple of months I think. I think. Yeah. All right. Uh, so uh, thanks again for joining us again. Also, yep, happy to. Uh, all right, uh, and I'm sure you are. Uh, even though it's bittersweet, I'm sure you are happy <laughs> that Sig Sigma got. Sigma got the power up that he deserved. Yeah, it's uh, it is. it's interesting to think, you know, who the next SP will be. Obviously, they've got Hein now, but they could have mm -hmm. SP Lambda or something. Get a yeah. I I do wonder like if we're gonna get another SSR and an SR like like SP at the same time next time, but it's hard to say. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I believe that's all we got for you guys today. Uh, again, thanks a lot for coming on, Hasso. Uh, it's been. It's been almost, like it's been like two hours. It's, 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 we've been recording for two hours, yeah. <laughs> so pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, thanks for taking the time out of your day to record with us. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching. And yeah, uh, prepare your crystals. <laughs> <laughs> See you guys next time. Ciao. Yep. See ya. Ciao.